Welcome back to The Breakfast. We always would always uh, well, remind you of something that happened every single day, you know, a couple of years ago in history. And today, uh, we are going back to the 15th of December in 2011. It was a day that uh, the United States officially ended the war against, uh, or the war in Iraq. It had uh, run for about eight years, since 2003, and had uh, caused civilian deaths as much as 205,000. Also, of course, a lot of people would say those deaths were a lot higher than that figure, you know, and of course, That's billions and billions. Figure. Yeah, we know figures. that the official figure and the real figure uh, sometimes totally, don't, you yeah. know, yeah. But, uh, billions and billions of dollars, you know, had all, also been spent, you know, prosecuting the war in um, Iraq. There's a lot of also, you know, numerous views and theories, uh, you know, into why the war started in the first place, whether it was necessary, you know, whether it was successful. Um, and of course, you know, how much longer, you know, it was going to take before the war was ended. And I would also quickly state that even after the war has been declared over, uh, 17 years later, there's still the presence of the U.S. military yes, in um, Iraq. You know, they, they, I think they, they had to go back sometime in 2014. Um, it, it's unfortunate, really, the whole scenario, uh, the whole thing that played out with the Iraqi war. It, at first, it was something laudable. Let's go find all the weapons of mass destruction. And then you get there, there doesn't seem to be real evidence to support the invasion and then the war lost the support that initially uh, went with it and at some point barack obama described the war as dumb and then the the the, the that was yes for instance yesterday um, in history yes. um he had on this same um in this same year 2011 he had declared that the war was over and then today the official ceremony at the baghdad international airport you know the lowering of the u.s flag right, and yes. that so many people are going to uh, go out um I mean, it, 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 it was described as a historic moment, and uh, according to uh, the then president, um, that um, the veterans are going to leave. Uh, they were able to, uh, they were secure in knowing that their sacrifice has helped the Iraqi people to cast tyranny aside. So, so that, that happened, is, really. and that is where, you know, I, I always find interesting, you know, those narratives and those, you know, reasons that were sold to the Iraqi people um, as the reason behind the war. If you remember that George Bush, you know, today, of course, we mentioned this yesterday, uh, he made similar statements, you know, and, you know, defended the war um, in Iraq. But of course, he didn't get, you know, the reaction that he expected from everyone. Um, the Iraqi people also and people from across the world also were able to, I, I would say, were able to see through the lies of you know these last, these campaigns. Last, last, last. You know, we will the, see beyond. Yes, what you will. You know, I mean, beyond the surface of what is being said. I remember very well, the United Nations was against the war in Iraq. Yes, uh, George Bush then had named it the war against terror, but the United Nations had, you know, made statements saying that they ne weren't necessarily in support of invasion of Iraq. And of course, Afghanistan had happened a few years earlier. Um, one thing you also mentioned was the 2014 uh, period during Barack Obama's they had to uh, period go when they back. had to go back. Uh, we, we know the Syrian war Great. Um, and the territorial gains made by the, the Islamic The uh, reason, yeah. and this is, I'm saying this now to relate this with what we're also dealing with in Nigeria. The reason ISIL and those tiny militant groups were able to thrive and were able to start was simply and mostly because of the destabilization of the security of, you know, in Iraq. This destabilization of the country itself gave rise to those militant groups. And so the United States, that supposedly went in to rescue Iraq from tyranny and uh, from, you know, its, its um, um, leader, eventually put the country into more chaos and then had to stay back to defend its citizens from new terrorist groups that had sprung up. And so it's, it's, a, it's decades of total madness, money being spent, people being killed. There were, there, were, there were numerous and numerous accusations of civil rights abuses, of um, um, abuse of, you know, of human rights of the citizens of Iraq. And um, these things, of course, till now are still being talked about, being whispered so, to, here. To be now. honest with you, the whole, I, I do not, I, I will be candid, I do not like reading about wars. Yes, we have lessons to learn from the experience, but final line, no good comes out 
of war. At the end of the day, we still come to the table to have a conversation. So why engage in war in the first instance? Uh, there is still conflict in that country. They, they don't seem to have found peace um, a, as we speak. So, uh, well, what happened today in history is what we tell you. On this day, there was a ceremonial end to the Iraqi war, and uh, Barack Obama had earlier described as dumb. I'm not saying it. He said it. Said it was, it was a part of his campaign. Okay. <laughs> um, let's look at something else that happened today again in history, and that's the premiere of Gone with the Wind. I said it when we started that each time I hear Gone with the Wind, the song that comes to my mind is Somewhere <laughs> Over the Rainbow. As in, I, I, it, that has nothing to do with it, but it's stuck in my head. I just had to say it. Anyway, today, um, the film adaptation of the Pulitzer winner, uh, Margaret Michelle's book by the same name, Gone with the Wind, uh, premiered in Atlanta. Uh, it was one of the most momentous occasions in Atlanta history a star-studded gala. All the names that were prominent at that time um, was at the premiere. Uh, it was set in the American South against the backdrop of the American Civil War and the Reconstruction era. Uh, the film tells the story of Scarlett, yes, the strong-willed daughter of Georgia plantation um, owner. It was just a romantic uh, movie, mm -hmm. and people loved it. Um, for the casting and the depiction uh, that was the, that by the actors that was chosen. Um, if, if you look at it, though, uh, it's argued that the, the movie was the highest earning film made up to that point, and um, it held the record for over a quarter of a century. When adjusted for monetary inflation, it is it's said to still be the highest grossing film in history. It is regarded as one of the greatest films of all times, and it has placed, um, been placed rather in the top 10 of the American Film Institute list of top 100 American films since the list's inception in 1998. Uh, you might want to know that uh, it was there in 1989. Uh, the United States Library of Congress selected it for preservation at, in the National Film Registry. So it's a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal film. I, I, I haven't, I, can't, I know I've watched it, but I can't remember the whole story. All I know, I just see two uh, men and a woman kissing. That's all mm -hmm. I can remember. It also got a little backlash from the black community because, you know, the, the film was alleged to have portrayed, you know, some parts of slavery. Yes, and slavery, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that, that part of it. But at the end of the day, I'm, uh, as much as, yes, there's a lot of connotations to these things, let's just enjoy a good movie. Uh, you know, enjoy it. Was, it's meant to entertain us. And uh, just take it at that level. And, <laughs> and that's how I'm going to take today in history. It's a good film. Now that the holidays are here, you can go look for those. Uh, another one I would recommend, I don't know when we're going to talk about it, the day it premiered in history, and uh, that's A Sound of... Of music. Of music. That's one oh of my, my favorite all time movies as a, a child growing up. I wanted to sing it. Do, audio do, do we have movies? Do we have movies today that children in the next 25 years would say, oh, that was, you know, a classic yes, movie do. of my childhood? We do. I don't, exactly. We do. I mean, we, we have we, now plenty. you've mentioned, you know, Gone with the Wind. There is, you know, the Sound of Music. There is a night in Casablanca. There is, the, the, um, the trick, the trick, though, would be to find one that, you know, appeals to a general audience. But the child, the parents, the people who are, mm. you know, hardened against the sentiment and stuff like that. That is the trick Maybe for Maybe the me. Marvel movies. But Maybe the Avengers? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, there are some of those ones I haven't watched. But any good movie, anytime. This is the period of holiday. The government has advised you, do not travel because of the COVID-19. And for those of us that will not be traveling, that will be working, that will be home, take a breather once in a while and watch something that will make you smile and just make you a little fuzzy. You know what I mean. I will still watch, I will still watch Home Alone. Today. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> no, that's, no. that's really what I'm asking about. Do, you, do we have movies today that in the next Everybody 25 years, people, still yeah, watch. in the next 10 years, I'm sure people would still watch Home Alone. Yeah, you know, as you know, one of the favorite um, favorite uh, Christmas movies ever. Yeah, um, babies. Well, I can't remember what I think that movie. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.